Hi and welcome back to the Dental Advisor. Today I'm going to address a crucial aspect of endodontics which is what steps to follow while treating an endodontically affected class 2 cavity. In our hurry to gain access into the pulp chamber, we tend to overlook two things of vital importance. One, the caries that was responsible for the pulp getting affected and two, the ingress of saliva through the open proximal cavity. Now before worrying about access into the chamber, it is prudent that the practitioner first remove all traces of active caries. If you don't do this now, then there is a good chance you will forget about it the moment you get caught up with the other steps of endodontics. At the end of caries excavation, you increase the visibility and also the probability of discovering the connection between caries and the pulp chamber. In cases of vital RCTs like this one, you may see frank bleeding the moment you enter the chamber. Now using a sharp long shank excavator or any scalar tip, you must clean out the contents of the pulp chamber after widening the access to improve the convenience form of the cavity. Note that at this point, your focus should be only on the pulp chamber and not on discovering the root canal orifices. Once deprided, the pulp chamber will automatically reveal its hidden secrets and you will be surprised how easy it is to locate canals once the pulp chamber has been properly cleaned. Note however that the mesial wall here is open to salivary ingress and along with it all the creatures that inhabit the oral cavity, namely bacteria, bacteria, bacteria. Now placing a temporary filling there also will not stop the saliva from entering and a definitive restoration should be placed at this point to seal that margin. In order to prevent the restorative material from entering the chamber, you can use many things like cotton, sponge or a piece of gauze, but I like to use plumber's tape or Teflon tape as it does not have any fibers that can get trapped either on the tooth surface or the restoration surface. How do you use it? Just cut a small length of Teflon tape, maybe 3 to 4 inches and fold it 3 or 4 times and then manipulate it into the pulp chamber using a pair of cotton pliers or a plastic instrument. Also, note here that I have prepared the tooth to expose a clear enamel margin along the periphery and this is what I will harness when I restore the tooth finally with light cure resin after completion of obturation. So, after that, that is tooth preparation and placing Teflon tape inside the pulp chamber, isolate the tooth using any sectional matrix band of your choice and then condition the tooth. After which, you can inject or pack glass inema type 2 into the cavity, light cure the glass inema and then remove the band. This pictorial guide was done to show the importance of caries removal and margin sealing when faced with an endodontic treatment of a pulpally involved class 2 cavity. Until the next visit, the Teflon will act as a space maintainer and can be easily removed when you reopen the axis. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more snippets to enhance and enrich your restorative and endodontic practice from the Dental Advisor. Goodbye.